Just as the Colossus watches over Gonfalon Bay, I was supposed to keep the Alliance leaders safe. I failed in that, but at least they aren't in the Ascendant Order's hands. Not yet, anyway. What did Captain Colleen and the others have to say, dear? The Captain believes the Order's leaders are Breton nobles, and the delegates didn't wash ashore. Breton nobles? Yes. We heard that as well when the Ascendant Lord and the Magus were speaking in the crypts. That's something to go on. And if the Alliance leaders didn't end up in the shallows, we'll need to look elsewhere. What Cap else, dear? Captain Colleen saw the Dockmaster, except gold from the Magus, when they captured her. Well, that's a lead we can investigate. I'd like to have a chat with Dockmaster Arnold about that and a great many other things. I detest being lied to, and he did it with such conviction. You're still on retainer, dear. Would you care to join me? I'll help you interrogate Dockmaster Arnold. The Dockmaster's home overlooks the harbor to the west. Jakan and I will meet you there. First Quentin, now this. I hardly know who to trust. Times like these, I take a moment to contemplate the Colossus in the harbor. It helps clear my thoughts. Tell me about the Colossus in the harbor. That's one of the wonders of the archipelago, dear. The locals are very proud of their statue. Even a few of them know the real story behind who it represents. I like it as well. One of the reasons I bought the manor. Such a spectacular view. Who does it represent? The Colossus of Gonfalon Bay is Baron Admiral Bendu Olo, though most on the mainland would know him as the Colovian King of Anvil. He formed the All Flags Navy around 2260 in the First Era to gain vengeance against the Slode for the Thracian Plague. The All Flags Navy? The largest Allied naval force in Tamrielic history. Ships from every nation and province participated, and many of the vessels were built right here on High Isle. The fleet launched from here and rained destruction upon Thras for their treachery. And what does this have to do with finding the missing Alliance leaders? Nothing, my dear, but you asked. Lord Bakara selected High Isle for the peace talks because of that history, though. The All Flags Navy recalls a time when disparate people united in common cause. He hopes to inspire the delegates to do the same. Right. Okay. So let's go to that Dockmaster's house. I will probably... Oh, listen to that cracking. The cracking of the thunders. But I will probably try to pick up a few side quests while we're here. Seeking new members above. What's this? Do you play Tales of Tribute, or would you like to learn the rules of the game that's sweeping Tamriel? Come to Gonfalon Chapter of the Royster's Club and find the society of your fellows. We're always seeking new members. Okay. <laughs> Who's singing? Is it the guy on the boat? He built their house between hills and sea. He built it along Gunfallen Bay. Right. Gunfallen Bay. You're looking pretty sus over there. Hey there. Uh, why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? I'm working. Make like a tree and get out of here. Can Come we make just make one more match? Make like a tree and like leave. Back. <laughs> and what will you bet? That ridiculous nose ring? Find another racket, Bragus. Tribute ain't for you. Bragus? That is a familiar voice. Heard all that, eh? Gleef is a palms up card sharp. One of the best tribute players in town. But like I always say. If you want to take the measure of a grot, you've got to climb. That nose ring jibe was unnecessary, right? I'll get her next time. Uh, someone told me I should talk to you about tales of tribute. Sorin, right? She definitely has an eye for talent. 
Yes, I can tell you all about tribute. It's a card game, a scavenger hunt. Zen's price, it's practically a religion for some folk. You want fame, gold, it's all there for the taking. Well, that sounds interesting. How do I get started? Ah, fresh player. Excellent. First things first. You need to learn the rules of the game. And you'll need a couple of decks of tribute cards, of course. Find Razamat in the Gonfalon Gaming Hall. Tell him Bragus sent you. He'll get you sorted. All right, I'll speak to Razamad. Razamad's the game baron here in Gonfalon Bay. You won't find a kinder or more knowledgeable player west of High Rock. Not that he'll go easy on your mind. He expects the best from the players he trains. Trust me, I should know. So what was going on with that woman exactly? Oh, Quifa. Just a lover spat. She loves making fun of my nose ring, and I love losing money to her, apparently. Match made in Ethereus. Does Tales of Tribute involve a lot of betting? Usually, no, no. Most players are in it for the joy of competition. But you know what they say? If there's an uncertain outcome, someone's got gold on it. I play a lot of unsanctioned matches. Putting skin in the game keeps things fresh. Right. All right, you cheeky hobbit. Let's go. We'll go inside. Find out about this Tales of Tribute. Talk to Master Razamad. Greetings, my friend, and welcome to the Gonfalon Gaming Hall. Please drink and make merry. We have many strong players gracing the hall today. Lots of action. Tales of Tribute is free to watch, but far more fun to play. Do you play, Wayfarer? Well, not yet. I'd like to learn more about Tales of Tribute. Then you have come to the right place. Tales of Tribute is a game of stories, some fantastical and others all too real. Two players share their tales with decks of cards. The game is elegant and easy to learn, but it takes great effort to master. And how do you play? First, you will need two decks. Each deck represents a different story, a different strategy. Your opponent brings two decks as well. Once you and your adversary combine your decks, the game can begin. A shared pool, you see. A level field of play. All right, so where can I get these decks of tribute cards? Make your way to the beginner's lounge and find my associate, Bragas. Tell him Razamad approved an initiation match. He will lend you a pair of decks and teach you the basics. Complete this trial and return to me for your reward. I just saw Bragas outside. Dear Bragas often strays, but never for long. His coin rarely holds out. He must be back by now, safe within the confines of the gaming hall where he can be supervised. Do not worry though, Bragas is a fine player. He will teach you well. Okay, Bragas. I'm not really one for card games, so you got your work cut out for you. Ha ha! If it isn't my new old friend. Found a place easy enough, eh? Pull up a chair, have a drink. As long as you're buying, of course, I'm, uh, well, I'm a little light in the purse at the moment. So you talked to Razamad yet? I'm ready to play. Razamad said you were a good teacher. Oh, did he? Oh, I love it when we bring new players into the fold. Gets boring playing the same old salts day after day. We need new blood in here. Now, before we begin, you'll need these. Two tribute decks you can borrow for educational purposes. And what do I do with these? You try to defeat me, of course. First to 40 prestige, or winning the favour of all the patrons, is the victor. Don't worry, chum. I'll explain that as we go along. And loosen up, eh? You'll do fine. I'll go easy on you. Yeah, I don't know about that. Let's play. Right. The essence of the game is to buy cards to add to your play deck. Each of us will use our play deck to score prestige until one of us gets enough prestige to win. Lots of cards, eh? The ones on your side of the table are yours. The ones on my side are mine. The cards in the middle are what we call the tavern. 
We each claim cards from the tavern to improve our play decks and earn enough prestige to win. You'll take the first turn. Let's both draw our starting hand. Each of your cards have a coin value, see? You can use their coin value to buy cards into your play deck from the tavern, the center of the table. Try to keep track of the value of the cards in your hand. Each card has a cost, a suit, and an effect. If okay. I were you, well, this card here seems like the right one for you to buy with the coin that you have. So, claim it. So I've got five gold. And this one costs three gold, I guess. Is that right? What's the one on the left there mean? Is that, does that mean... Does that mean the value? Gain one coin? Or does this cost two gold? Coin cost is three, but the play effect is gain two coin and two power. Oh, that's combo. Two. Oh, okay. I'll just do as he says. So how do I do this? Click. So three of those, and then I can choose to buy that. When you buy a card, you subtract its cost from your coin total, and you get the card. Then a new card replaces that card in the tavern. You still have enough coin to buy another card, so let's do that. Okay. So there's my played cards. So I've got two gold. I can buy the port portcullis. Gain two power. Now you can't play a card you bought right away. When you buy a card, it goes into a cooldown pile here, see? You can see at a glance what card suits are in your cooldown pile. It looks like you don't have enough coin to buy any other cards. And there's nothing else you can do at the moment. When that happens, you signal that your turn is over. Okay. End my turn. Any resources you have at the end of your turn will be cleared once your turn is over. Except prestige, that is. Once your turn ends, you discard your cards and draw five new ones. You can start to plan your next turn while I take mine. That said, you should always keep an eye on what your opponent is up to on their turn. They might buy a card or take an action that will force you to revise your plans. So now, it's my turn. I'll control the table until I signal the end of my turn. See if you can figure out my strategy based on my actions. It's got one coin, two coins. Three coins, four, five. Let's see any. Oh, he bought that thing. Opponents, cooldown pile. Well, well. The cards you drew gave you both gold and power. Power has two uses. The first is combat, but it also turns into prestige at the end of your turn. Remember, earning prestige is how you win. Right. <laughs> Is anybody confused? Somebody's going to have to explain this to me. So I've got one coin, two coins. This one's just got a power effect. One coin, one coin. There are four coins here. So there's nothing I can buy, right? Because it costs eight, seven, five, seven, six. So what am I supposed to do then? That gives me power. I just play them all. Remember when I told you that your currencies get cleared when you end your turn? Well, power doesn't carry over between turns. But when you do signal the end of your turn, any power you have left over turns into prestige. Good to know, eh? See, these little fellows, they're our patrons. Each deck comes with its own patron, and they play an important role in how the deck works. See? Each patron has something they want. A price, let's call it. They also have something to offer. A reward. Pay a patron's price, and you'll get their reward. You have to pay the price all at once, and you usually get the reward immediately. Try paying one of these patrons. Whichever one you choose to pay will offer you a boon. Just keep in mind, 
you're only allowed to pay one patron per turn. They can get a little jealous. <laughs> so I guess the Duke of Crows pay all your coin, gain power equal to coin paid, minus one. So it's what, three? Three power, which will give you four in total, which then converts into prestige, four prestige. Now oh, well, let's see what happens. The patron you just paid, notice anything different about them? They favor you now. All patrons start in a neutral bent and then show favor to whoever pays them first. Of course, you can pay a patron that favors your opponent. If you do, that patron will become neutral. Pay them again on a later turn and then they'll favor you. And here's a tip. If you ever can get all patrons on the table to favor you, you'll win the game. Even if you have less prestige than your opponent, just one more thing to keep an eye on. All right, you need to draw new cards, but your deck is empty. Now we shuffle your cooldown pile and that becomes your new draw pile. You might draw cards you bought last turn as well as those you started with. Your cooldown pile is empty. That means all the cards you started with or bought during play are now in your draw pile. Right, it's my turn again. I'm going to draw some coin, use it to buy a card, and draw some power from my play deck, which will become prestige when my turn ends. Just like your turn, only, um, more experience. <laughs> Those on, cards buddy. you drew can trigger a combo. See how they have extra effects if you draw another card that matches their suit? Luckily, you bought cards with the suit you need to trigger these combos. Some of the most powerful effects on cards come from combos. And a card will tell you how much of each suit you need to activate its combo effect. Great players always try to trigger combos, so keep track of those suits. We're closing in on the end. I can tell by keeping track of the prestige we've earned. For this practice match, we're keeping the total small, but in a real game, you'll need more prestige to win. Okay, so... It says combo three. I could just... Right? I could just do three of these? Is that right? One, two, three. Which goes to six, should become ten. I've got two gold. Can't really do anything with that, can I? Nope. Do I just use them all? Five coins, six. Well, I guess the six is going to go and then it'll become ten, right? Oh, I can buy that. Coin costs three. So does one of... Gain two coin. Oh, okay. So this one's got two coin. It's worth two coin. A grand victory! Oh, Bragas. Maybe a little too grand. <laughs> Go talk to Master Razamad and tell him you bested me. Just don't get cocky. Next time won't be so easy. Bragas, I destroyed you, mate. You told me how to do it, of course. I don't know what the heck happened, but... Alright, it's interesting. I don't know if I'd muck around with it too much personally, but... Maybe, maybe later on. Master Razamad. You return victorious, yes? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the match. I have played countless games of both luck and skill, and truly, Tales of Tribute is the best by far. So, now that you've learned the rules, do you wish to continue your gaming journey? Uh, yeah, I want to play more Tales of Tribute, but what do I do now? Now, you claim membership in the Gonfalon chapter of the Royster's Club, a fraternity of tribute players committed to fair play and stiff competition. As an official Royster, you will gain access to a host of opponents and decks of your very own. Are there other rewards? Oh, countless rewards. With each victory, you will rise higher in the club rankings, do well enough, and you may even earn the right to challenge the club's founders, the creators of the game itself. So what do you say? Will you join us? Uh, I guess so. I'm just trying to complete the quest here, so I guess I'll join the Gonfalon chapter of the Royster's Club. 
Then it is my honor to furnish you with your first pair of decks and welcome you wholeheartedly to the Gonfalon chapter of the Royster's Club. May good fortune shine on you, my friend. <laughs> I am eager to see you put those cards to good use. <laughs> you joined the Royster's Club at an opportune time. Smaller club chapters are preparing for a series of tournaments, ours included. The contest will not begin for some time, though, so I suggest you get some more practice in the meantime. What do you recommend for increasing my skill? The gaming hall provides a wealth of opportunities for Royster's Club members. Why not look around and familiarize yourself with them? Bragas can make the proper introductions. Speak with Soren, too. She's another protege of mine. Uh, I'll be sure to speak with Bragas and Soren. Anything else? As in all things, the best way to improve is through doing. Set out and find new opponents. Win or lose, your skills will grow and your strategies will sharpen. Once you establish yourself in the beginner's circuit, return to me for a reward. Alright, I'll speak with Bragas at some point in the future, and sorry to make a name for myself. Remember, in these early days, winning and losing mean little. Regardless of a match's outcome, you must see every game as an opportunity to hone your skills. It may sound nonsensical, but sometimes, losing is the surest route to improvement. Okay, so we'll leave that alone for now. Uh, and we'll go and continue on with our main adventure. I'll continue, actually, I'll move towards the Dockmaster's house. And then we'll just see. We'll see if there's anything else along the line. But that's interesting. Anybody get into that? Tales of Tribute. I mean, I remember in uh, The Witcher 3, you had Gwent, right? Which was a fully fleshed out card game as well. This one seems a little bit more complicated. Maybe hey, it's just a matter of playing a few times. You get used to it after a while. Okay, but right now we've got we've got pressing matters to attend to. Can't be sitting here just playing cards the whole time, can I? Or can I? Oh, Dark Blade's here. I wasn't expecting to run into trouble so quickly. This is a mess. I imagine the Ascendant Order ruffians loitering outside had something to do with that. Let's look around. No sign of Dark Master Arnold, yet plenty of evidence that something is amiss. Take a look around, please. See if you can find any clues as to where our absent Dark Master might have gotten to. Dark Master Arnold. As per our arrangement, here is your payment for your continued assistance and discretion. It is imperative that you direct official attention away from salvage operations on High Isle until we have finished our work at the Shallows. You may find yourself tempted to look deeper into our business, or see whether we are willing to pay more for your silence. I must warn you that I strongly dislike renegotiating settled agreements after the fact Stay away from the lock and content yourself with the handsome sum you have been paid, and all shall profit. The Ascendant Magus. Just as Captain Colleen said. Oh. Hmm. Someone planning to depart doesn't set a meal on the table. Watch out, watch out, Jakan. A few drops of dried blood. I think I have a picture of what transpired here. Let's talk, my dear. So much for finding anything useful. 
If you ask me, the Ascendant Order is covering their tracks. Could be they've already got what they wanted. Talk to Lady Arabelle. Maybe she can figure out what happened here. Nothing, Pap. Food left on the table, and signs of a recent scuffle. I think it's safe to say Dark Master Arnold found that his Ascendant Order friends weren't entirely satisfied with their arrangement. They've obviously spirited him away. Why would the Ascendant Order kidnap Dark Master Arnold when they'd already bribed him? The Dark Master ignored the wishes of the Ascendant Magus. Captain Colleen saw Arnold collect another payment at the lock. I suspect he got greedy. And once he proved he wouldn't stay bribed, well, he became a liability. Where do we go from here? The Ascendant Order's throwing around a lot of coin on High Isle. If we follow the gold, we'll find someone with wealth and local influence behind this. Another clue that a High Isle noble is involved. Hmm. Perhaps they want to keep the war going. Why would anyone want to keep the war going? Profit, of course. That's what it always comes down to. Lord Bacaro should be able to tell us which nobles stand to lose if the war ends. Go to Steadfast Manor, northwest of the city. I'll have Jakarn look for the Darkmaster and then meet you there. Do you think someone else is secretly working for the Ascendant Order? Almost certainly. As I said, we must be careful about whom we trust. It is a concern, but it can also work to our advantage. Gold only buys loyalty for so long, and I suspect our adversaries are not as organized as they appear. Why do you say that? We know their opening move didn't go as planned. They were interrogating the captains to try to find the missing Alliance leaders. Now they've taken the Darkmaster, who would have been more useful to them where he was. They don't trust each other. Do you think Doc Master Arnold knows where the Alliance leaders are? I doubt it. If Doc Master Arnold knew where the Alliance leaders were, he would have happily sold that information to the Ascendant Magus in exchange for his freedom. We know he didn't because the Order is still looking for them. You'd think a group that claims to want to an end to end the war would want the peace talks to proceed. I suspect the Order wants power, not peace. When the throne is vacant, your prospects of becoming Emperor suddenly seem a good deal more promising. That sort of prize might tempt a noble with just the right mix of ambition, gold, and imagination. And you think Lord Bakaro can point us to the most likely suspects? Lord Bakaro worked diligently to bring the peace talks to High Isle. Not everyone thought that was a good idea. I'm curious as to who opposed him and why. Better yet, he won't voice suspicions without good cause. We can rely on his discretion. Okay. Lord Bacaro it is. More of these punks. So is it northwest? Northwest. Oh, what the... Get out of here, idiot! My goodness. Steadfast Manor above. How come I can't see the entrance? This is above, but I can't, can't quite see the entrance. Definitely not the way to get there. Where is this place? Oh, it's all the way out there. Okay. Northwest of the city. I thought it was northwest in town. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Something's going on down here. Wait a second. Oh, I just missed it. That volcanic vent look active. It was active a shit. Oh, man. Druid's Gate. Anything special about this? I can't believe you 
you drank our entire stock. Me? Where's your proof? Just because I hit woke up in a pile of bottles. Did you hear that someone Doesn't purged the corruption from the weird tree? Uh, uh, those could have been gotten there in any number of ways. What's going on over here? Oh, my head. Every time I move, it feels like someone's putting my skull through a grindstone. What happened last night? Janata? Hello there. Say, you look like the type who could go traipsing around dangerous areas in search of rare ingredients. Could I interest you in a job? There's coin in it for you, and the knowledge that you'd be bringing joy to many in Gonfalon Bay. What's the job? My partner and I are purveyors and creators of fine drinks. Hilgrim does more drinking than creating, however, which got us into our current trouble. We were on the cusp of making a groundbreaking new spirit, then Hilgrim drank our entire supply. So what do you need from me? We need three ingredients to make another batch, and Hilgrim's in no state to get them himself. The drink requires flesh flies, a sister's passion flower, and a druid's bane mushroom. If I marked the locations on your map, would you gather them for us? I'll get your ingredients. Here, these spots should have the ingredients I mentioned. If you can gather them and bring them back, I can whip up a drink that's sure to make all the mainlanders empty out their pockets. So long as I can keep Hilgrim away from it. What's so special about this drink you're making? Hilgrim and I are always experimenting with different flavors and ingredients. Not all of them are successful, of course, but this combination in particular was exceedingly delicious. We stumbled upon something revolutionary, I'm sure of it. And what's the secret? We've only just met, lovely stranger. I can't go giving you all our secrets just yet. Hilgrim and I have a special technique when it comes to the blending, but truthfully, we can't take all the credit. The local ingredients play a major role. Okay. I'll find your ingredients. Good luck. <laughs> oh, you're my hero. My guy. <laughs> Drunk as a skunk. Born brute. Give me that 30 gold punk. Set that dude ablaze. So many quests around. See, I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be focused on this main mission, but everywhere you go, somebody needs a little something. Trying to get this one done first, though. Sister's passion flower. Okay. Next ingredient. Up north, there's actually a crafting area over here. I'll just swing by that. Get that discovered. We'll go up north and there's a way shrine there. So I've got an add-on that lists, um, that shows you where all the side quests are. So I got an idea of where to go to when I need to go and pick all these up. Aggressively get these done. But I'm concerned for the safety of my retainers. My associate might be able to help in that regard, Lord Bacaro. Hey, Lord Bacaro. I didn't actually mean to come out here, but uh, now that I'm here, let's have a chat. Lady Arabella asks about the nobility, while two of my retainers are missing. The Society of the Steadfast will do whatever is necessary to keep its people safe. Uh, she mentioned. The Ascendant Order might be involved. Do you think that's possible? We know the Ascendant Order has been attacking people all across High Isle. Yes, I understand that you and Lady Arabelle have tangled with these brigands before. They claim to be knights, but they have no honor. Will you do as Lady Arabelle suggested and look for my retainers? I would consider it a personal favor. Where were your retainers headed? I sent Grenier and Denise to retrieve a shipment from the Navir docks. 
but I expected them back ages ago. They were traveling the road to the south. I just pray no evil befell them. The supplies we can lose, but good people are irreplaceable. I'll look for your missing retainers. Thank you, my friend. I'll confer with Lady Arabelle while we await your return. I'll tell her everything I know about the nobility of High Isle, if she really thinks that will help. I knew peace would be hard to achieve, but I never expected a war. Do be careful out there, my dear. If the Order can strike out at a benevolent association such as the Steadfast, then no one is safe from these villains. Meanwhile, I'll discuss matters with Lord Bacaro. See if we can narrow our list of suspects. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna go back over here. So the missing retainers are down there. Uh, I'm gonna go... Ah, uh, I've gotta go back to the chapel. Right. All the quests over there. Oh, they're everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere. All right, let's go find these missing retainers. We can circle, Lost another one. swing back. Sorry, world boss, rock up. Got a weight shrine over here. I'll go grab that. Coral Road. Swing back this way, and we should bump into Rotators. Oh, what was that? Big fella. Somebody just dispatched him. Is this missing retainer? Ah, down here. To whomever finds this, ambush. Knights in unmarked library. No house emblems. They were waiting for us. Tried to fight, but there were too many. Denise got away. She ran south. The two of those murderers chased after her. The rest looted our wagon. Don't understand. Lord Bagaro was sure the road to Castle Navier was safe. Can't hang on much longer. Tell my indecipherable scroll. Torn cloth. A scrap of frayed cloth torn from a garment. Tracks lead south away from where it was found. Ah, I see a delve. Called Breakwater Cave. Take that, Spriggan. Well, I shouldn't just walk into someone's home, even if they were rude. What? Morik? Oh, good. A kind face. I have tried time and again to ask politely for my friend's safe return, but they rudely mock me in response. Would you help me retrieve Privet? They took her away into Breakwater Cave, didn't even ask my permission. Who's Privet and who took her? Oh, my Privet is without a doubt the most beautiful sheep on the island. Just ask anyone and they'll agree. A swell of Hadalids reside in this cave. They displayed such inner ugliness and took Privet. I just heard her cries from inside. So Hadalids took your sheep? Well, even if my privet was just your typical sheep, which she is not, that would not excuse the Hadalids' rude behavior. I need someone strong to support my negotiations for privet's return. 
How would you feel about joining me in exchange for coin? I'll enter the cave and I'll retrieve Privet. I knew you looked friendly. There goes a true friend to animals, I said. Now, with you to accompany me into the cave, our negotiations can begin. They may get rough, but I refuse to leave without my Privet. I don't want to hear more about Privet. <laughs> Let's just go in. I got a job to do, mate. But I'm going in there anyway. Are you actually going to come here? Oh, okay. I'll negotiate with my axe. Search for signs of privet. Right. Looks like something points us in this direction. Hallowed, Hadalid, Hadalid Peelers. The negotiations have begun. <gasps> A skeleton! Not privets, thankfully. I hope this poor soul didn't die alone. Oh, it's much darker and damper than I expected. Not sure I'd choose such a place to live, but who am I to judge? The Hadalit culture probably has different values. Somewhere in here is my privet. Let's look around. I see a sheep right behind you. Multiple sheep, in fact. Maybe not a prize-winging sheep. Sheep. Something further back there. I guess that's our main quest. Let's go out around here. We'll get this part done first so that guy can clear off. Whip him! Taking the punks down. Coral Hodge Motor. This guy cowering behind there. Come on, buddy. Gotta to toughen up if you want to get your sheet back. Another one there. I see a chest. Let's pick that lock. Oh! Deadlands treasure map. Out here. Okay. Deadlands was the last DLC that we went through, or story base, I guess. In between that and this was the Ascendant Tide, which was a dungeon DLC. Crabs! We got crabs! Somebody's got crab- oh, what the heck? A resurrection? Resurrect this. Ah, oh, more enemies. Oh. 
I've observed the Haldalids, Haldalids for days now, how very strange these creatures are. At first I thought them some offshoot of the drug, but now, after long study, I find that they are a wholly different species. According to my research, they are migratory, disappearing beneath the waves for a decade or more before re-emerging and spending a similar period on land. The specifics of the Haldalid life cycle are not well understood, even by Gwilym scholars. This is mostly due to our inability to observe them underwater. Hadalids can descend to great depths without difficulty. Even broad-chested Argonians struggle to follow these creatures when they descend beneath the waves. I must learn more. After many days in the Navir archives, I believe I've made a great discovery. A ship called the Silversmith participated in many raids on slowed positions during the Thracian War. Her captain, Grigette Maston, Detailed an encounter with the Hadalids on open sea as follows. Encountered a score of crabfolk during engagement with slowed beast. Joined battle briefly, then withdrew. Raised colors of thanks. No response. Pursued diplomacy. It seems that the Hadalid did not hold the slowed in high regard. Perhaps we're not so very different after all. I discovered another journal detailing initial attempts to make contact with the Hadalids. Apparently, the enemy of my enemy is still my enemy. Baron Admiral's envoys dispatched to the Crabfolk, encampment on Amanos. Seven diplomats slain and two abducted, found drowned a week later. It seems the Hadalids have their own reasons for hating the Slode, but what could it be? Is it a territorial dispute? Did the Slode mistreat them in some way? Without the means to communicate directly with the Crabfolk, I fear we will never find out. I received word that the Hadalids may have taken refuge in the nearby Breakwater Cave. This is my chance to meet with them and make another attempt at negotiations. I will report on my success in due course. The negotiations did not go too well, I imagine. Alright, let's continue. More animal bones over here. Oh no, Privet! Wait, these aren't sheep bones. Maybe a horse? Oh, poor thing. Okay. <laughs> An empty backpack. Bunch of reef vipers. I see a sky shard. I see a sky shard. This guy's a freaky look at things. The Hadalid. Wonder if we'll see them in the uh, the trial. Jumped right over that guy. A new recipe to learn. Ah, oh, Sky Shard, you are mine. Privet Sash, I gave this to her as a present. Finding Privet Sash worries me. She'd never take that off. Unless she left it as a clue. She wants me to know she's here. The bones we found looked gnawed on, but none of them were sheep bones. So I feel confident Privet's still alive. Your sheep took off its sash to leave you a clue. That's what you think, all right. It appears that Adelaide's a whatever creature belonged to those bones. What a horrible notion. You don't think they'd plan to eat poor Privet? How could anyone look into those sweet eyes and consider such a deed? 
Privet isn't food. She's a friend. But I must agree. Very nasty behavior from my new neighbors. Where should we look next? We know Privet came through here because we found her sash. But since we didn't see any sheep bones, they must have moved her. Let's search the caves over to the west. I know it's rude to rummage around someone's home, but they started it. Why did you think the Adelids would be friendly? From the archipelago to the mainland, everything is war and fighting. But it doesn't have to be that way. I try to assume people have good intentions. And usually they do. Maybe this is all a misunderstanding. I can work that out later. Oh, Morik. Morik, you're a little... You're a little crazy, baby. Alright, so... I'm gonna go all the way over there. Look, a trail of bones. A good sign. Following a trail of bones is a good sign, is it? Morik. Imps. Got an imp up the top. Can't attack it though. You hear a bleating? Brine Claw? Oh no, Privet! How could they put my beautiful friend in a cage? Cage? We um, absolutely must free her. You got it. Just one second. Come on, Brine Claw, show me what you got. Come on, Brian Claw. You can do better than that. Man, okay. Okay, okay. You got some whirlpools going or something? Got some crabs. Got some friends. Oh, jeez. That was strange. Whole bunch of crabs just coming out trying to claw me. Sweet Privet, reunited at last. A cave exit is nearby. Come, Privet. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Go on, get out of here, sheep. What the heck kind of quest did I just do? Oh, the Elder Scrolls Online. Alright, uh, we'll go out there, we'll see this guy, get that quest done. Oh, my dear Privet. I don't know how I could live without you. Oh, dear. I must say, and I don't usually speak ill of anyone except goats, but those Hadalids were awful. Didn't even bother to explain themselves. I'm thankful you came along to help. And Privet tells me she appreciates you as well. Does it seem like the Hadalids harmed Privet? No, thankfully. Her wool is damp and dirty, which I find offensive, but she's safe. 
I'll clean her right up in no time. Please, take this as a thank you from the both of us. I'm glad that not everyone is as rude as those Hadalids. High Isle feels so peaceful most of the time. That's why I like it here, a respite from all the chaos of the mainland. But recently there are Hadalids and rogue knights roaming the roads. And adventurers like you. Too much excitement for me. What are you going to do now, Morik? First thing, Privet needs a bath. She seems a little sad at the moment, but a long soak should fix that. Then I'll make us a meal. Ah, the simple pleasures. I just want her to feel safe again. Do you think the Hadalids will try to take her again? You were quite stern with them. Maybe the Hadalids caught the message not to bother their neighbors. If I see them lurking around again, I will just tell them they're not welcome. I can be quite stern as well when I need to be. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm just... I'm just a Nord. In this land, trying to help the people out. Let's go back inside. <laughs> 